So uh, for multi-user environments, uh, Abby and I started on this last year uh, within Intel, and uh, the motivation was uh, to uh, do some initial research with data scientists uh, to see what uh, what they actually needed. Uh, at the time we began this work, uh, the typical scenario in uh, in deploying uh, Kubernetes clusters was to, uh, and it still is today, uh, provide everyone with effectively cluster admin uh, permissions and allow them to uh, create whatever resources they needed to. Um, but we found that uh, within you know serious data science shops that uh, they needed strong privacy controls uh, within their workspace. And uh, they also needed a fair amount of isolation uh, across one or more workplaces uh, that they were doing uh, particular workflows on. Uh, they also needed a fair amount of uh, fairness within scheduling their jobs uh, for training uh, as well as uh, for inference. And uh, uh, what, what we found uh, fairly common, uh, even in the early days of Kubeflow, was the ability to access uh, different different storage uh, devices, uh, whether it was uh, uh, GCS, so the storage, or AWS S3, or the various uh, image registries, uh, of which some of them uh, would require secrets in order to download their particular image to run their their job. So uh, we felt, uh, you know, after the initial investigation and research that uh, uh, providing a strong environment that was strong isolation guarantees using RBAC was the way to go. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll segue to, to Evie for the next slide. Uh, so data scientist, uh, if, if we, if we don't go by the methodology that initially Cam mentioned, if we don't want to give everybody admin access, then uh, what are the options? Uh, uh, the options that we, uh, we wanted was that reduce the dependency of data scientists on the DevOps or uh, cluster admin. So uh, the model we used, we said, let's say we have uh, one user or data scientist uh, that can work on uh, many different projects. Uh, we we consider that that workspace or project as like a naming space. And then we said, how? What if we uh, keep the naming spaces completely isolated using uh, you know uh, RBAC? So uh, and this led to least privileged models that. Uh, well, no cluster wide definitions were needed and uh, no privilege escalation uh, through some sort of a admin authority to create the workspace. Basically, from the very beginning, once the pieces are in place, the user is able to, to just send a request, create their own namespace and set the Kubernetes config and from that point on, they're in business. This is uh, this also uh, supports uh, supports putting uh, putting this uh, isolation and security uh, wrapping around uh, different storage models like NFS S3. And uh, as of now, it's uh, it's integrated into uh, Kubeflow notebooks. Uh, here is an example of the profiles uh, that uh, we have. For example, there are two users, Jill and John. They one is a is in GCP IAM. Another one has just a service account, and they they end up having two different namespaces. Uh, technically, working on two two different. Uh, different uh, assignments, but uh, later on they can decide to either share the workspace, it's, it's completely up to the namespace owner, which in this case is the data scientist. Okay. 
So this is a quick flow. Uh, we had moved from Meta Controller to uh, a Golang implementation of the Profile Controller, uh, and this is a simple uh, workflow uh, that sh that shows us. Uh, but more importantly, and per perhaps the theme of today is what we're working on now, which is uh, going to be released in a 0.5x release, uh, and these are um, fairly critical features uh, where we plan on uh, uh, extending the uh, profiles to accommodate a specific set of users. Right now, any authenticated user in an IAM-defined uh, service account uh, is granted access, so it could be fairly wide. If you want a much tighter set of members, uh, we're going to be extending profiles to accommodate a smaller group uh, and more formally the, the, the group concept. And we're also going to uh, allow um, additional users in a single user namespace uh, so that uh, the given user can add other people with different roles. And uh, finally, we'll have a delegation model because uh, we want to execute things using service accounts in the Qflow namespace. Uh, and um, some of our utilization will be utilizing the fairly new cloud S uh, CDK that provides a common layer to access GCP, AWS, and Azure. And uh, these, these aren't necessarily uh, cast in stone, and some of them uh, we'll hash out with, with Jeremy and others. Uh, but that's, uh, that's you know, I think I'm probably over. But, yeah. <laughs> Just that time. Thank you. Thanks.